The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. When we begin to think on the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for us, how can we not praise him? How, how, how hard is it to praise him when we think on it? You ever get that unction when you're sitting down in your living room sometime or just laying back and you thinking on what God did for you? Where you used to be, what you used to be, how you used to be, and you can't do nothing but say, thank you. You ever get that? You don't need an audience for that. Uh, that, that's pure praise. You ever, I, I don't know, but sometimes I could be driving my car and I'll just turn off everything. And, and I just start listening for him. And I look around as I'm doing my business and I'm looking around and I think about how I used to be. Oh, now, now I probably wasn't bad as some, but I was still hell bound. God had mercy on me. And sometimes when I'm doing that, all I can do is say, thank you, Lord. Uh, I remember driving around in the summertime, Sister Pat, no air conditioner, <coughs> just praising God in my hot, hot truck in the heat of summer. I remember riding to pick people up for church years ago when we lived in Alamo Heights. And the church was downtown. I remember driving way out to Redland Road, 1604, in that three, uh, uh, that one window Cadillac. It only had one window that would go down. No air conditioner in that Cadillac. Amen. Amen. And I'd get up early in the morning, 6.30, me and my wife, we'd get up 6.30, something, man. we have everything, everybody ready, and we were never late for Sunday school. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. We were never late for Sunday school. I know we probably didn't do enough hard work, and we probably didn't have children, although we did have children living with us. Uh, uh, but when I think back on those days and, and how God blessed us, how God has blessed us, and, and, and the enemy always want to show up and take you back. He always want to put his nose in God's business. He, he want to try to persuade you that you've been doing this long enough, ain't nothing happened spectacular. Your church still little. Uh, but see, he, he can probably get that by somebody that's a novice. Don't really love the Lord. Somebody that haven't been down anywhere and watch God's hand pick them up. He can probably trick somebody else with that. But when you think about the goodness of the Lord and what he's done, how can you not say, thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. It's just sad you can't even turn on the TV and look at a good news story without somebody being shot in the parking lot, found dead in the parking lot. Drunk driver killed somebody else. There's something about what Christ is doing in us that makes us, ought to make us say thank you. That I'm not what I used to be. Oh, Lord, thank you. Because if I die in my walk, I know I got a home in glory. Uh, if that drunk driver hit my car and you called me home, I got a home that you called me to. Uh, if somebody walks up and decides to put a piece of lead in my head, that's okay because I got joy in my heart. Amen. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And I got a home in glory. I don't care what the landlord say. What God has for me is for me. Huh? And it is not based on 
uh, how I used to be or what I once was, but it's what I am now and what I'm going to be. Aren't you glad today? I'm glad. You know, the older you get, the closer to home you get. Uh, now, that don't negate youth being called home. But I, I, I'm learning that the older you get, the less important things become. Because things are going to remain. I looked at a picture of my mother the other day. And when she had long hair and a red dress, and she had that beautiful smile on her face. But when God called her home, she was frail. Uh, her hair, somebody else had to comb her hair. Uh, she, she couldn't smile as much as she probably would want to smile. But I believe she's going to be smiling pretty hard here shortly. <laughs> she's sleeping now. Uh, but she's going to wake up one day because the trumpet's going to blow. Uh, and and she's going to have to wake up because that's going to be the alarm clock that's going to bring to an end all time. There's something about not minding what folks say about you that, you know, you, you get to a point where you really don't care no more. You might care that it bothers somebody else. Huh? You, you, might, you might bother you that other folks is bothered by it. But I used to be held by my mother. I used to, I, I, my mom had a picture with me, Edgar, and Linda, and we were parked out in front of Aunt Florine's car. Now, I don't remember taking the picture uh, because I was little in a diaper sitting on the hood of the car. But I, and my mother stood next to the three of us, and Linda had a little afro. Edgar had some JJ-type hair. And I had curly locks. And my mother's hair looked like it was down to about here. But I was in the picture. I don't even have to know where they developed the picture at. Who developed the picture? How much it cost, but I was in the picture. But God is not basing my salvation on what's in that picture. My salvation is based on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. It is contingent upon how I live from this day forward, my life before man. I can't go back and sit on that old car in front of Florine's house. Uh, no more. But I can move forward and prepare others to live in my father's house. Why do we keep going back into old habits and stank attitudes? Come on, preacher. Come on. I thought those things were under the blood. On, you know how the Pentecostals like to say under the blood? Yeah. Everything's supposed to be under the blood. <laughs> Sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and read the whole Bible, and you still acting like you ain't never heard of Jesus. It's contingent upon you, how you feel in that moment and what you think you got. Let me tell you something. It got to come to a point where your speech and your life and what you show forth exudes Christendom. Because you, see, we keep going back and getting the old man and showing it to the Lord. And the Lord said, oh, what is this? Something new? Well, who in Utah? Lord, help me. I'm doing that again. Doing what again? See, because he forgot about all that other stuff. This is brand new ignorance. <laughs> this is brand new rebellion. This is brand new you acting like you don't know Jesus. Remember how some folks like say, who your daddy? <laughs> you act like you don't know who your daddy is. Because right. uh, you get attitude and then you want to blame it on being hungry. What is this hangry? <laughs> I, I told my secretary, I said, I ain't never heard of that. You mad because you hungry. Just eat something. You upset because you woke up and you tired and you're not ready to get out of bed, so you mad at the world. Why you upset? You woke up? You woke up? You woke up? Glory! 
huh? You 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 want to be upset, huh? Because you're not feeling well. Uh, and now you want to get angry because you, well, I just don't feel good. Well, why you got to be nasty because you don't feel good? That's probably why you sick. Uh, you, you get some joy in your heart and treat people. Sick and don't equal mad. Where did that come from? I bet you Eve started that mess. <laughs> got to push this baby out of me. And, and now I got to hurt because of some fruit I ate. It wasn't the fruit that you ate. It was your attitude in eating the fruit in the first place. Hello? Everybody want to know what fruit you think it was? Rebellion? It was the fruit of rebellion and disobedience. Didn't want to do what her husband said because she was smarter than him. She was one of them strong black women. Why y'all looking at me like that? Woo wee! Golly, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise us, holy name. Y'all won't be the priest. I'm the priest. Will y'all pray with me? Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day and for your mercies. Father, I thank you that you're retrofitting me for thy kingdom. Lord, look upon every heart, every mind, every need, Lord, and let your spirit be present in this place today. Father, I don't know everything. It's a lot I don't know. But I do know that here I stand because you brought me here. Lord, use me. These are your people. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon this man that we might hear from heaven is our prayer. Keep us. Guide us. Strengthen us, even in your holy name. In Christ Jesus, we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. The message is quite simple today. The title of the message. The title of the message is, When the Old Man Shows Up. When the Old Man Shows Up. You know, everybody in here used to be something else before Christ came in. Now, I mean, some not you holy people. You're probably always holy. But some of you that actually had to get saved was delving into different things. Even some of these young kids in here were exposed to things they never should have been exposed to. That's just a fact. And some of us as children, when we were young, we were exposed to some things that we never should have been exposed to. Now, we don't have to go down the grocery list of that exposure, what we were exposed to, because what it is is what it was. But there's this time when we, we want to proclaim the name of Christ Jesus. We say that we are born again. We say, Lord, use me. Lord, take me and hide me in your wings. Hide me, O oh Lord, in the shadows of the Most High. Amen. And, and then God begins to move in your life. You come with testimony of how God did thus and so. And I remember thus and so and how God blessed me to, to get married. How God blessed me to have a child. How God blessed me on my job to get a job. How God, you know what I'm talking about? How God changed my wife. How God changed my husband. How God gave, I'm raising my children better now. How we got these testimonies of power and the presence of God. And we begin to learn and God tells us when you first get saved and when you first start bending to the truth. Like the brother said. When you start growing into the direction that God would have you to go. You're going to run across some things that. Wow, I didn't know he was going to ask me to do that. Huh, I, I mean, you mean I got to go and tell her I'm sorry? Uh, you, you mean I have to go and be sincere in my I can't just soap opera the sorry. You know them soap opera sorries where you're really not sorry, but you're trying to convince the person you're telling, and hopefully God will buy it too. You know, where you bring out the tears that ain't real. Because in your heart, it's really just, you about to throw up. The liquid got to come out somewhere, so you choose tears. 
Because you really don't want to say, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, we get a little attitudinal. I mean, maybe not all of y'all. Some of y'all never get a bad attitude, I'm sure. Uh, an old man tried to come say, you ain't got to put up with this. I want you to use words like, there was a time when, if I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Oh, see, you don't know who you messing with. Don't make me go Pharaoh on you. Huh? Oh, we just subtly just ignore what's being said. We ignore it. We, we don't want to go there. The old man tell you, don't pay no attention to that. You want, you, you, that's okay. He's wrong. She's wrong. You ain't got to put up with that. You, you, you angry right now, so he just got to understand you upset. She just got to buy into your upsetness. That's that old man showing up. He don't even knock. Don't even send an invitation. He don't text. He don't call. Ain't going to be no email. He just going to show up. He doing his job. That old man to show up, but I got saved. When I got restored, folk that was trying to charge me $50 for a little bag of dope wanted to give me dope. Soon as you get saved, the dope dealer don't even want to charge you. Uh, he want that old man back. Uh, I'll take this gram of coke. Go ahead, man. Don't worry about it. Oh, you in church now. I'm going to leave this on the hood of your car. Get that off the hood of my car. It ain't even my car. Come on, preacher. This car belongs to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And all the windows might be stucking up. <laughs> but I ain't going to. You better get that off this window, <laughs> off this car. That old man loved to rear his ugly head. And he'll start. And you'll think, well, I ain't said nothing. Sometimes your silence could be just as damaging as your word. Oh, well, I didn't say, at least I didn't cuss him out. At least you didn't cuss What you, you ain't saying, you backslid in your heart already. At least I didn't cuss him out. You devil, you. That's that old man, ain't it? He still look the same. He ain't going to change. You're the one supposed to be changing. You're the one that's supposed to be growing. You're the one that's supposed to be an example. Yeah, you're going to be challenged. God will use your children, your dog, your wife, your job, he'll even make you hangry. He'll do it, man. God, he'll hide your Snickers bar from you. I uh, see. Because that, 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 you know what I'm talking about, them commercials? Where they come out and they look like Robin Williams. And that's not really Robin Williams. It's a six foot five black dude. Can't find his other converse or something. And the point God said, bro, here, you ain't yourself. I'm going to tell you, you can't snickers your way through this life. You better Jesus your way in this life. Huh? Because the old man's going to show up. He's going to tell you when, when you, somebody in your life, you, ain't gonna, you, can't, you can't have that kind of joy. You can't have that kind of family. You can't have that kind of peace. There's always some room for the old man to sabotage your life. And guess what? You bring him in. You can't blame the devil on your attitude. Right. Well, the Lord, well, the devil just made me, you know, I guess the devil just got, the devil didn't do nothing. He's in Wisconsin. <laughs> you want to blame everything on the devil. That's your old man. You ought to say, Lord, get this thing off of me. Help me work through this thing. Uh, you, you've called me to do a work, and I'm acting like I can't hear you. Uh, I was all hunky-dory when you first called me. You know what I'm talking about? Man, I'm, Lord, well, I'll hula hoop for you if you want me to. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. I, I got, Lord, I'll go preach on in St. Peter's Square somewhere. Lord, whatever you want me to do. And the Lord said, well, why don't you try obeying your husband? <laughs> well, Lord, <laughs> let me turn the TV down, Jesus. <laughs> I can't hear you. You know, you know, the Lord said, why, why, don't you, why don't you shut up and listen to your wife? Yep. Suffer the wrong, like Paul said. Yep. And do it with joy. Don't do it with trepidation and I'm going to get you later. 
You know how some of y'all all like to put that moment in your pocket and wait like a, like a snot rag? Uh, and then you wait to just fling it out. So fling y'all. Uh-huh. That's that old man mentality. When the old man shuts up, what do we do with it? Uh, you know you can feel him when he's in the room. If your wife or your husband just take a shower and shave and put on some smell good, you ain't you can close your eyes until he just came in the room. So when the old man shows up, you, hmm, what's that smell? That's your attitude. You smelling something? That's you. Do do your spiritual. Hello, your attitude stink. Iron sharpeneth iron. Huh? If if you're gonna work together, work together. Quit letting that old man show up. If you want a relationship that's gonna last, then have a spiritual a walk with Christ that's gonna last. Quit expecting everybody else to lift you up when you got Jesus to lift you up. What does Psalm say? Lord, lift us up where we belong. Ain't that what he say? Go ahead, bro. Background. Y'all turn with me. I'm going to preach now. I've already said something. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. See, I'm going to put y'all in the book. See, the devil liked, and, and we like to, and self likes to, to, to get lost in space, so to speak. Uh, we don't want to, will you stand when you find that, if there's Bibles in front of you, if you don't have one. Amen. Chapter 15, 1 Corinthians. Verse 30, will you? And the word of God reads, And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Somebody say that. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it me? If the day rise, if the dead rise not, let us eat and drink. For tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. You may be seated. When the old man shows up, there, there, there ought to be Moments of spiritual clarity when we are making decisions on how we respond, act, or react at any given moment. That clarity is illuminated by the Word of God so that we might see clearly how we are to act, react, or respond to a given situation. Not only in word, but in our body. Your body language can speak volumes about you. Your facial expressions can be misread. Somebody can take a serious look for an angry look. That's why it's important to get to know the people that you deal with so you, you at least know oh, they're not mad. They're just being emphatic. They're not angry. They're just being emphatic. They're just animated like that. You know, I have one of those faces. My wife has had to tell me, why you got to tear your face up? My face was toe up in 1959 <laughs> when they brought me out. It didn't get better by 69. 79, it was a whole new bag. 89, don't know what happened. 99, still there. 2009, oh well. Two, well on. Uh, but it's not so much that, it's whether or not I'm allowing the spiritual attitude of what is not beneficial to take hold. Amen. Wow. See, those things that don't benefit, why would I let that in? I struggle with that. Because I'm going to tell you, every man struggles with that. Every woman with children is going to struggle with that. Anybody with a job is going to struggle with that. 
Because you, 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 we get caught up sometimes in momentary lapses where we can't see what God is saying and we don't know how we are putting off the wrong signal. And then what that does is the old man shows up and says, that's all right, girl. You showed him. Huh. You showed him. He ought to know you was tired and, and wasn't going to go to Sunday school. What's wrong with him? You know, and quit telling people, well, you know how I am. Because that goes to you, too. Don't you know how they are? Yep. All right, all right. Hello? Yep. Well, you know how I am. Well, so what? 